Hey everyone, so Jimmy Sharm here with another Cinema 40 tip. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can create these animated decorative shapes using simple shape with shader effector inside Cinema 40. Before starting now, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe, like and hit the bell icon for more notifications. So let's turn to the project. First let's make a hexagon. Here, from end spline, select end side and create one. Change the plane to XZ in object tab. Now add extrude from here. Select extrude and down here in object tab, change direction to Y. You can adjust the offset as needed. Check caps. Add size 4 cm to get a nice round edges at the top and bottom. Let's add a cloner. Let's throw it inside and build it right away. Select cloner and down here in object mode, change mode to honeycomb array. Also orientation to y axis. Instance mode to render. Great. Little adjustments here in width. Avoid either by hand or entering numerical values here at our convenience. At your convenience. But also extend a little here. For example, 20 put uh, here 40 more. That is. Here we created such a small carpet of a covering from the same element. Now, of the cloner's visibility. Duplicate the extruded shape. Hide the original shape. Press C to convert to polygon. Select the converted polygon and right click to connect objects plus delete. Now first select the point mode here, then right click to select optimization functions. Optimize will delete any leftover vertices from deleted polygons. With that done, select the polygon mode, then right click to select loop cut to make a parallel cut here and another one just below here. Now with live selection, make the selection like this. And we create a material to add to it. Double click to open it. Of the color and reflections layer. As we don't need them, we want the luminous material. Make a nice fluorescent green kind. Well, this is what kind of material is obtained and I simply throw it on the entire object. So it's perfectly assigned to the loop faces. Now create another material. Double click to open its properties. Change color to a darkish black tint. In reflectance, delete the default reflection layer. Instead, add a new GGX reflection layer here. GGX simulates the effect of very small imperfections in a surface, resulting in what appears to be a different fall of micro scratches. So in GGX below, in funnel, select dielectric, make it strength down to 80%, reflective strength to 50%, as we don't want that much strong. We can also throw its this dark material here, just drag the dark material in front of the green one, tada, there it go perfectly assigned now as we wanted. Great. Now unite the extrude layer also. We really see the problem is that they are fighting wrong now. This is due to the fact that we have placed them wrongly here. So select the extrude layer and move it to the side. And assign the dark material to it. That's how it looks. A perfect honeycomb bed laid. 
so that they match let's choose uh, this can be done through the menu go to mesh and axis center thing axis center and axis center again and here you can set the percentage to which edge your point will gravitate i want it to lie at the lowest point of the passion so the game is just minus 100 and then i take away and press y then it moves there well a little bit they see somewhere a couple of couple of millimeters right now we actually snap off this mode exactly and now go to moga here we select a shader effect in parameters of the color mode uncheck the use alpha strength option also you cannot use the scale as it is uniformly scales in selected axis you can choose the position also in shading add a shader noise to create the random movement of position in y direction so go to settings of this noise i put global scale 1500 Also, the animation speed you can check. One gives us this. Automatically behind the animated one, you can zoom in even more. The point man that suits you for plus or minus received such waves on the surface of our clones. To loop our animation here, there is a forward loop parameter, and we know it in seconds. Don't forget that initially. Your project is considered to be 25 per second. It increased here 125 frame. You can do it here 125. Increase this area. Since I have 125, then accordingly, this is 5 seconds if the frame rate is 25 fps. So here we set 5. And yes, indeed, this is how it happens. First, it coincides with the end, and here we have the same cycle. that is you do not notice the difference during the transition well more precisely there is small pause it's good just to play 126 or 125 but this is not so important now the main thing is that we got a cycle now i want to create a camera that will fly over everything now let's create a camera and zero down all the angles of rotation and position values first so that you can carefully set it all with your hands so move it back a little turn it around so that it looks tilted well it's already good now create a null and make camera the child of the null so that we can move and control the camera with the null then let's take this cloner take an instance from him. so so here we have two copies turn it on to move that is to a position further moving 125 frames and i need the camera to come to the same state otherwise the cycle on camera man will not work for this i will use the transfer function of the null to move the camera first key it here and says that it should move that is the zero exactly moved exactly the center of the instance here and key again the other two parameters are not necessary at all what are we checking let's select my camera go back press play here we have movements and now at then we should not fail the difference during the transition yes really you see everything went well just what i wanted to get that is uh, the camera moves and it turns out that it starts the same point and exactly the same point comes at the end due to this you have a loop movement we can also go the curve editor to linear out the movement of the null to get the smooth look so then naturally here we need to bother little with the reflection because such a glow will be realistic only if we use the illumination on the surface 
more precisely the global illumination are not really needed here but we can on it by going here in render settings add effects global illumination also select physical from the top here in renderer to get more realistic effect. The physical render engine in Cinema 4D lets you render with ultimate realism. Select sampler to progressive in physical. In global animation, select presets to exterior physical sky. This will light up the scene naturally as we haven't added any lights. And put naturally a map of reflections. Well, you see that the light is already gone. This is from global illumination. You can also increase the intensity of this glow in the illumination tab here. Let's say put find and everything will get better too. But on this, I will leave you the main one. I showed you how we unloop this. Also, to make it more interesting, I will duplicate the extruded shape once again and duplicate the green material also. Change the color to blue. Apply it instead of green to the duplicated shape. Move it as we did earlier to the side. Let's check how it looks and randomize in the animation also. Perfect. I think it is quite amazing. I hope this light spark in your brain to what's possible here. And I urge you to give it a try yourself and see what you can come up with. It's so much fun and it's very addictive but in a good way. So try it out. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.